All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today we've got another Lost Arts video. This is going to be a continuation of our brush gun video. You guys probably recall we did the what is a brush gun, and what we shot into uh, some pretty thick brush uh, with a variety of different calibers just to see what effect the brush would have on the bullet passing through. Uh, you guys know we're getting on deer season here. A lot of people are going to be getting in the deer woods, so obviously they need to know these kind of things because, you know, science, right? Um, but anyway, we are going to be uh, approaching some different calibers that you guys were like, hey, what the heck, why weren't these uh, calibers in the original video? So we're going to be going down uh, the rabbit hole here and having a little bit of fun. We've basically set up the same exact test. And if you guys aren't familiar with what I'm talking about and the what is a brush gun video, go back and watch the old video first just to refresh yourself and make sure you know what, what we're dealing with here. Uh, in the first video, we, we kind of stepped up uh, the, the calibers as we went. Uh, we went with like 22, 556, 308. Uh, you know, we shot a couple of other things like 444 Marlin, 4570. Um, but we're going to be basically just doing the same thing, but with some different calibers. A lot of you guys are asking about 44 Magnum. All right, I've got a Henry Allweather here in 44 Magnum. Uh, we're going to start with 44 Magnum, and yes, we are doing 3030. Uh, that was one, one, uh, one comment that we got. People were like, "Hey." Why no 3030? So we, we definitely got your 3030 in this video. We're going to be doing 44 mag, 762 by 39, 3030, and then we're going to use some heavy bullets and a 30 out six. We're going to use some 12 gauge slugs, and then we got a special treat for the end. Without further ado, this is a 240 grain Winchester Super X, I believe. We're just going to lob one through, and basically, in case you guys don't know, we got about 15 yards of brush right here. And then we got a target about 50 yards uh, on the other side of the brush in between me. So I'm 50 yards from the target with a good bit of brush right here in between. So the whole thing that we're trying to showcase here is what kind of bullets can make it through this brush and hit the target. Relatively unscientific, but it's still fun. Here we go. And guys, remember, this is really difficult to see. All right, let's go have a look. All right, guys, we learned a little bit here. Well, for one, two of my shots would have been dead on the money. And I think what happened here, I don't think the brush caused this other round to veer off. I think that was my aim, just being off. Because, you know, guys, we are shooting through some very thick brush right here. That bullet went just fine, but it did literally go right over the top of the head. So in terms of your left and right uh, windage, the bullets are right there in the same line. It's just I think that that bit of deflection there was definitely not the brush hitting, you know, being uh, causing some effect on the bullet. It was definitely me. Uh, so that's one thing that we learned here is, guys, if you can't see it, you probably shouldn't shoot it, but that's not really what we're trying to discover. If there's some light brush and you can see that animal and identify it and you know you want to take a safe shot, you take the shot. But I lined up really nice there and shot two right on top of each other, which tells us that the brush is definitely uh, not going to take, uh, do anything against 44 Magnum. So let's step it up. Uh, we're going to go into the 7.62x39, which is one of my favorite uh, calibers for hog. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're going to step it up a little bit. This is another caliber that you guys requested a lot. And it just so happens to be one of my favorite, like, 100-yard uh, deer and hog calibers. I love 7.62x39. And what better way to launch it than a nice Ruger M77 Mark II all-weather. This is a pretty rare gun. It's one of my favorite rifles. I love it. It's got a loophole VX2 on it. Anyway, enough of that. We are going to sling some 154-grain uh, soft point. You guys probably know, if you've watched the channel any, uh, that's a round that I think performs really well in the 7.62x39. It expands well. It's a good, solid, uh, soft point bullet. Uh, 154 is a little bit on the heavy side for a 7.62x39, so let's see how it carries through the brush here. Don't make me look bad here. All right, remember guys, a target's very difficult to see. Let's go have a look, see if any of our bullets tumbled. I did get one miss there, so let's see if that bullet tumbled. All right, guys, that surprised me a bit. Okay, I'm a little bit biased, 
I like 762 by 39. I think it's a great little cartridge, low recoil, uh, you know, real easy little cartridge, cheap to shoot. That's one thing I like about it. You know, those tool ammo and Wolf 154 grain soft points do a pretty good job. It's a good bullet, but alas, we did have some disruption in the brush. One of our 762 by 39s tumbled into the board, unfortunately. I really hated to see that result because I, I had a lot going for the 762 by 39 as being a good contender for getting through the brush a bit, but maybe not quite so much. Now, two of our rounds made it through unscathed through the brush. I think what happened was they just happened to go through without you know impacting too much brush and meeting a lot of resistance. But uh, one of our rounds, unfortunately, keyholed right into the board. So uh, chalk that up for maybe a lose when it comes to the 762 by 39. I still think it's an ideal Georgia, you know, 50 to 100 yard deer gun. 762 by 39 is a great cartridge, but I'll tell you what, we're gonna step it up. Let's go on, on to the 3030. I know this is what everybody wants to see. Let's do it. All right, guys, a moment you've all been waiting for since the very beginning. 3030, all right, we got a color case hardened, uh, beautiful Henry here we're gonna be using for this uh, test. Again, topped off with a Leupold uh, VX2, wonderful little optic. This one goes all the way down to two power which is handy for making these short range shots. And that's why I selected this particular optic for this gun. Uh, we're gonna run 170 grain uh, Winchester Super X. It's the heaviest 3030 that I could find down at Fudmart down the road here. All right, let's have a go. Let's see. And, and FUD is a term of endearment, okay? We're not, we're not poking too hard at all our FUD buddies. I mean, I, I get it. All right. Let's have a little shot here, see what we can do. Oh, wow. <laughs> now that's gonna be a cool test. That just snapped a huge piece of privet hedge. We may have to add some more in there because I think that just got a good part of it out of the way. All right, one more shot and let's go see if that bullet tumbled. Uh, all right. All right, that's a good result. That is a perfect test. We saw that 3030 split right through that privet hedge and let's hope that the board caught it and let's see if it tumbled. All right, guys, I know there's gonna be some people that are ticked off in this result because I know some people are just dyed in the wool, hardcore 3030 fans. And I have to admit, going into this test, I was a little bit biased against 3030 because I've never really been much of a 3030 kind of guy. Growing up, using uh, lever action rifles and things like that. Most of my deer were taken with either 35 Remington or 444 Marlin. Uh, I never had access to 4570s or anything like that. I did have access to 3030s, but I always chose a 35 or a 444 when I, could, when I could get it. With that being said, the 3030 stacked two almost right on top of each other, which is an excellent result. We did have a 170 grain Winchester Super X 3030 smack that privet hedge and part of the jacket sheared off or the bullet broke into pieces. It actually broke the bullet into multiple pieces and you see two definitive, one is a, is a pretty good looking keyhole there and the other one's probably a piece of jacket splash went through and the bullet deflected a pretty good little way off to the right. For the most part, it was well in line. I feel like all three shots were pretty much in the same area. So that puts 762 by 39 and 3030 at this point with this test on the same page. We got a very similar spread of shots with the 7.62 by 39 as we did with the 30.30. Take that for what you will, guys. This is not a very scientific test. 30.30, eh, it's probably about as useful as 7.62 by 39 with heavy bullets. But here's the thing, guys. Seven, uh, the 30.30 has been used to harvest thousands upon thousands of deer over the years. So we're not telling you anything you don't already know. Guys, if you love your 30.30, we're not saying don't use it. All we're saying is, that's what happened. That's all we can observe. I tell you what, let's try out some heavy bullets in a 30 alt 6 because I know 30 alt 6 is a big time uh, game cartridge, especially for white-tailed deer. Let's try it out. All right, guys, for the 30 alt 6 we stepped up to a special rifle. This particular rifle belongs to Chad's dad. It's a uh, Remington Model 4, semi-automatic, and uh, we've opted for the heaviest 30 alt 6 we could possibly find, and we got some Remington Core Lock and a 220 grain 
this is uh, some, some pretty heavy 30 all 6 ammo, okay? Now granted, your velocity is not going to be as high, but one of the things that we learned in the first video was that the higher velocity and the lighter weight, it doesn't take as much brush to really make that stuff veer off in keyhole. So the thing is, if you are going to use a gun in the brush, at least in our experience, you want to opt for a caliber, uh, or a bullet rather, in the caliber that is kind of heavy for the caliber. Okay, so if you're talking 7.62 by 39, you don't want to launch a 124 grain bullet. You want to try to get a 154 or whatever. You don't want to go for 150 in a 30-30. You want to step up to 170 or 185 or whatever you can get away with. This was the heaviest bullet we could find for sale uh, at our local sporting goods uh, authority. All right. Okay. Model 4, 30-06, 220s, through the brush, nothing but net. Here we go. Well, sounds like all three hit with uh, some relative smackdown. Let's go have a look. All right, so let's talk about 30 alt 6 Well, for one, all three rounds impacted within a very, very nice group considering that we were shooting through some, some pretty nasty brush, okay? 30 alt 6 is no slouch, but I do have a theory here, okay? We are shooting a 220 grain bullet, so it's a very, very heavy bullet for the caliber, okay? And that attributes a lot because that 220 is not moving as fast as something like 150 grain core lock would be running. The faster the bullet and the, the lighter the mass, the larger the chance that when it hits some brush, it's going to want to veer off and it's going to want to dump a lot of energy into that spitzer and really just kind of make it veer off and do crazy things. When you start changing the bullet profile and giving a very deliberate uh, frontal point of the bullet being a little bit more flatter, and then it's also moving slower, it's heavier, it has a lot more carrying energy that can get through that brush and do the job. So guys, 220 grain 30 alt 6 is a winner. Remember guys, 30 alt 6 has case capacity that's very similar to 300 Win Mag. So it's a very, very big case that holds a lot of powder, and the twist on most 30 alt 6 rifles provides a good range of different bullet weights. So not only is 30 alt 6 good for running a heavy in the brush, it's also good for running lighter pills if you want to try to get some more velocity out of a lighter projectile. So you can run anything down from like a 125 grain or 120 grain bullet all the way up to a 220 grain. So that makes a 30 alt 6 a chameleon in the woods. So that's something to remember there. So we're going to go from 30 alt 6 to another very requested caliber. We're going to shoot 12 gauge, buckshot, and slugs. Let's do it. All right, guys, this is going to be an exercise in pain, but not futility. For every action, there's an equal or opposite reaction, and we're about to demonstrate that in full force. We've got some Berniki 1 and 3 8 ounce Black Magics. This slug is no joke, guys. This thing, it has a bear on the box for the reason, for a reason, I should say. Let's go for it. Oh, gosh. This is a little uh, Savage uh, model, model 84. Let's just go for it. Uh, yeah, I see it. <laughs> well, sticks in the chamber, so that tells you something there. High brass slug load. Let's try that again. That sounded like a ding-a-ling, didn't it? Look at that. All right, one more. And yes, we are going to try uh, some buckshot, guys. Oh, yeah, that got through the brush, didn't it? There's nothing better than a 12-gauge slug for uh, delivering some slap-down power downrange. Let's go see what happened. Well, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, you do not want to be standing downrange from a 12-gauge slug, especially something like that Black Magic. That's a wicked slug. Basically what I was looking for, I was going for a nice marriage of weight of the slug versus velocity. Uh, those slugs are definitely not moving slow and they're pretty heavy. Okay, so we saw the two impacted the plate, one favored a little bit low, and one of them barely missed the bottom of the plate down here low. So we're going to chalk this up to say that it's probably just my bad aim with that particular gun and possibly the fact that I'm running an untested load in that single shot. I've never shot that gun with that load. 
but it does show that the group is still decent and uh, I don't really think it's to say that the uh, that that the brush caused that round to deflect at all I think we're definitely good there I think it's safe to say a 12 gauge slug you're gonna be good to go uh, but I tell you what we're gonna repaint the gong let's do the same one with buckshot we've got some 3 inch magnum 15 pellet federal buckshot let's try that out see how it does all right guys I've got a little bit of a prediction when it comes to the buckshot this is some three inch buckshot moving at 1,210 feet per second, 15 pellets from Federal. And uh, this is definitely not a slouch of a load, a three inch load. Um, I think that what happens though, and I'm gonna make a prediction, I think that the individual pellets, despite the speed that they're moving, I, I think that they're gonna be disrupted a good bit. But let's let the, uh, let's let the test show the, uh, the results here. Boy, so much dang brush. All right, I think I know where to aim. God, that load kicks. And this light little gun. Why am I torturing myself like this? It's all for a good cause. Yeah, that, uh, that messed all kind of things up going through there. I heard some dinging going on down there. Let's, uh, let's see what we came up with. Guys, that load is no slouch. Let your shoulder know it's there, especially out of this little lightweight guy. Let's have a look. All right, that was a pretty interesting test with the uh, buckshot, well, for one, my shoulder's uh, yelling at me right now for treating it so bad, but we saw that about a third of the pellets connected with the target, but all of the pellets wound up within a pretty decent group size, even through the brush. So buckshot is a great type of uh, ammo to just kind of lob through the woods and just kind of see what happens. I would imagine that buckshot would probably be better for like uh, raccoon hunting. If you're hunting coons and things like that, or maybe uh, you're going after something like uh, coyotes or foxes, or something. I know a lot of uh, coyote hunters like buckshot because if a coyote's on the run, it gives them the ability to kind of lead them a bit and just lob some buckshot at them during the day. And if it's close range, a short little uh, stand that they're making right in a, in a close vicinity in the woods, then yes, buckshot is perfect coyote medicine, uh, raccoons and things like that. For deer, I probably wouldn't hunt uh, deer with buckshot anyway, but if you did, 50 yards is probably further than you would ever shoot it anyway. And I think that what we really are showing here is, is really just the limitations of what the gun can group buckshot uh, at anyway. I chose a single shot shotgun because it's cheap and available. I paid a hundred bucks for that gun. So there you go. That's what a hundred dollar shotgun with buckshot ammo can do through 50 yards. We always have a wild card. Let's uh, try out the 577 450 Martini, one of my favorite cartridges. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're gonna run a 577 450 caliber Martini Sporter. Uh, man, this one's got a real pretty stock on it. Uh, a great little hunting rifle. This is a wonderful cartridge. Now, this particular bullet is a mold that I had special made through Accurate Molds. It's a 600 grain flat point. This is the absolute biggest bullet that he could possibly squeeze into mold blocks for this particular caliber. I mean, I told him to mill it out and get it as big as he possibly could. So that's a 600 grain bullet. Uh, this one's Chrono in. Uh, about 1100 feet per second so it's getting down and uh, I don't know if my math is on or not but I would imagine that's probably yielding about 1100 to 1150 foot pounds of energy so definitely putting some energy down range and we are shooting black powder all right I can hardly see what is going on down range but I'm just gonna poke one through the bushes here and just see what happens Sounds like we're three for three. Let's go have a look. Of course I knew that was gonna happen. All right guys, I think we can prove here, slow and steady wins the race. All right, 
when you start increasing the mass of the projectile and you start slowing it down, it's going to take a heck of a lot more brush to stop that projectile than if you're trying to go lighter on the bullet and then increase the speed. Yes, speed kills, speed is awesome, but there still has to be the physical bullet hit the target to do the damage. The bigger that bullet is, the better chance you have of hitting a vital organ, the more brush that you can bunk, and I think that these tests really prove that the bigger the bullet, the better it's going to get through the brush and cause more damage. Uh, not only really the size of the bullet in terms of diameter, but the weight of the bullet is a big contributor. I would say that for a brush gun, 180 grains is the absolute minimum if you're trying to break through some of this light brush or even heavy brush to get through for a potential shot. 180 is about the minimum bullet I would consider. We went all the way today from a 154 grain bullet all the way up to a 600 grain, and we showed consistently that the heavier the bullet and the slower it's moving, the better chance it's got to get through the brush and, uh, and do the job. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Is there something that we left out? Let us know in the comment section below. We'll be sure to check it out. Guys, we'll be doing more of these videos. Thank you very much for the support. We'll see you next time.